Tapestry Month. Yes. We have uh, another installment today. This is a woman who, uh, you, you were talking about her, her story a, a few weeks ago, overcoming adversity, leading a community organization, and, and changing a lot of lives for, for, for a decade now. Oh, absolutely. Monique Waterman is her name. She is a force to be reckoned with, and she's in East Flatbush, and she runs a community organization that helps kids, they get off the streets and out of gangs. That's the most important thing. And she's one of the most courageous women I've ever met. They don't think we care, but we do. Let me start by saying I'm true. I know I love my brother, how about you? Talk a little bit about East Flatbush Village and why you decided to start the organization. Okay, so I wanted something in the community that represents what I needed when I was younger. All of our programs based on preventative measures, proactive measures to the violence in the, in the streets. So basically, if we get them into arts, we get them to athletics, we get them into whatever, culture, arts, something to keep them active, we will recruit before the streets recruit them. Town Ford, that we can barely afford. Girls running behind rappers on world tour. Elders looking down and saying the world's lost. What would you do if I told you the world's yours? You talk about having a, a rough childhood yeah. and your brother playing a central role yes. in your upbringing. Yeah. Yes. My mother worked about three or four jobs, so that was tough for me. My grandparents was there to keep that foundation, and my father was in there. So my brother, of course, took on that role of being my father. And we're only two years apart, right? So he was the one who made sure I was safe. Talk a little bit about some of what you've been doing within the community and how people responded to it. I went to our council member, Jamani Williams, like, we need to do, uh, it was like a young man just got shot on his bike. This person died. It was so much shooting. We decided to do a um, anti violence March. Another person was killed, another young person was murdered, and their life was taken away. And there's there's going to be people watching where they're in the situation where they're a part of a gang, mm -hmm. and they feel, I cannot get out. I am stuck. Mm -hmm. If I try to leave, there are going to be consequences. Figure out what the real issue is, and then you have to figure out what gangs are involved, and then you get specialist violence, uh, you know, interrupted specialists that come in and could try to make a peace treaty, have a conversation with both, you know, groups, if there's like a rivalry gang. You've become this mediator within mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. How have you become a liaison between the community and the police officers. We organize block associations where we have, they have precinct council meetings and we all come together and be on the same page. So a lot of times I think the miscommunication is where the mistrust come in from. We had a um, forum, a police forum, and we had police officers, the regular community, I invited everybody, and we had a hundred people in a room and they talked about what can we change when they come to the police department. And that was very powerful. As we celebrate Black History Month, mm -hmm. Tell me what that means to you. Well, the first thing is, um, like how we do the artwork. Yes. These are people from the community that we see every day. Me, you, we represent what a role models. Everybody child affects me. I may raise my child a certain way, but they're going into the public school and they're around other people's kids. So my premise is I help the whole, we help the whole community and treat people how to organize. My vision actually in starting this organization was that, you know, I could link up with other people in the community and we could all bring, we had this big coalition and we gonna work together. It's kind of like I have a dream. They don't think we care, but we do. Let me start by saying I'm true. I know I love my brother. How about you? That's Star Fraser singing, by the way. Great voice. Yeah. <laughs> so who pays for all of this? It's all through public funding, and she's gotten some assistance through the mayor's office and just average people like you and me. I would go onto the website and give a donation. The interesting thing about uh, Monique is that she got pregnant at 19. And it's a difficult thing to have to deal with for anybody. I mean, she went straight from high school to college. She went on to get her associates, mm -hmm. bachelors, working on her PhD and her dissertation. She had a master's degree, for goodness sakes, and she has four kids, 16, 15, 12, and the youngest nine and she receives help of course from her family including her husband uh, really interesting what she was saying about the the police meeting yeah. that uh, you know a hundred people showed up the the community wants things to be better and when you have an event like that okay people say let's engage let's fix some of these problems so there's a there's a real desire to if 
if an organization like hers facilitates that. Oh, absolutely. And this is something that she's been working on, as I mentioned, for 10 years. She started in her home, which her grandmother, who migrated from Barbados, mm -hmm. basically saved up her money, bought this house, two-family house for her family, and they started building this community organization in their home, and she recently got a storefront. And so she's doing big things, and I see big things in her future. Your interview series continues next week. Yes, so excited. <laughs> I'm interviewing uh, the First Lady of New York City, Shirlene McRae. We get personal, and we also <laughs> talk about her advocacy work. So that's a must-see, of course. Stacey Ann, thank you.